There it is. Right, J Val, you're eating that? So low and low as it can go. Work it, work it, work it! Ha ha Good morning, guys, ladies, gentlemen, kids, boys, girls, grandma, grandpa. We're out here on the jetty today. I got J Val right there. I got Asher right there. And uh, we're gonna try to get into some salmon. When it comes to jetty fishing, it's kind of like midway through the season right now. So there's still plenty of time to catch fish, but right now is like the most primo time to do it. Um, weather's gonna be just absolutely beautiful today. So we're hoping to stick a couple fatties. I mean, I'll just be icing on the cake, right? So don't go nowhere. Second cast, uh, second, A Asher hits the uh, first fish of the, of the day again. Look at this little coho. Too bad it wasn't clipped though. Yep. Wild fish, bing, bing. Bing, bing. Bro, on the casting spoon. We on just said that. Spoon. Guess what? It's tried and true. Oh, oh, Ooh. now it's Ooh. in my waders. Oh, that's uh. Yeah. Here, take this, take this. That's uh, that's gonna be a hole. <laughs> Hey, hey, calm down, bud. Calm down. The wiriest coho on the bank ever. Look, I'm already dirty. This fish is real, real dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and wash it off and tonk it, and then I'll come show it to you guys in one second. Well, you guys, only here about 20 minutes and I stuck a fish on the casting scale. Uh, kind of an experimental uh, lure. Been real curious as to if one of those casting steels uh, would stick a coho down here. I figured of course they will. Coho will hit almost anything you put in front of them if it's bright and shiny and moving right. And uh, when you throw a spinner, the blade kind of drags in the wind and uh, it'll really reduce the distance you can throw it. But that casting steel is like three ounces of lead. It really soars. It's just like a pencil lead, you know what I mean? I bent it a little bit so it'll wobble in the water and it's got that bright pink tail on it. I just really thought it would probably be a coho killer and turns out that it works. So beautiful little fish. That's probably only like a five pound fish. Look how fresh and chrome and shiny it is. It's a super nice, beautiful, fresh fish. Um, stuck it on the casting steel. You know, um, I was curious if I thought this was gonna catch a fish. And uh, first fish of the day, first fish out of all these guys fishing down here today, uh, stuck on this little casting steel. On like my fifth or sixth cast, been here 20 minutes. Pretty, pretty stoked on that. What a beautiful, fresh, chrome, wild coho. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Um, I still get to catch a clipper coho or a nook, so I'm gonna get back to fishing. The boys are still casting behind me right now. We could catch another fish any second. Let's get it. You. I'm pretty stoked on my new uh, tried and true secret bait. Don't tell no one, you guys, but getting one of these casting steels, bending it into a little wiggle so that it wobbles as it's coming in. You want it to wobble a little bit. And uh, sometimes they come with a little, a little fly skirt on the bottom. I tied this one up. I don't think it's real necessary, but I think it uh, gives it a little bit of extra action, giving it that little 
that little uh, pink thing to grab onto, a little hot spot, so to speak. But uh, I really like the casting steel. I'm able to throw this basically twice as far as uh, either of these losers were able to throw their uh, spinners. So, I mean, we all caught fish today. Nobody's a loser, but everybody out here is using the exact same type of freaking lure. Tiny little differences, but everyone's throwing a giant hoochie spinner. And I'm hooking that bad boy. It's like what I use for surf casting in Mexico. It's kind of like what you would uh, do for rockfish. And it's real heavy, so it goes real far. You already got it? You got snaked by the goddamn sea lion. What a bitch. It was right when I was thinking this thing was, yeah, had all this skunk flavor on it. Dude, good. he took it off the surface. Yeah, good bite. Actually, that's the biggest top, top water bite I've ever had. <laughs> Dude, it was, a, oh, it was a big fish. You know the only thing that's going to get rid of that feeling, right? Yeah. Stick one. Still a good fish though. That's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Yeah, he's got a lot of life in him still. You're like, I'm not getting sealed again. You know what? Both times? Doing the pop. Right, I'm sorry. Watch the watch. Watch this wave. Watch this wave. Phew. He's going nuts. We're keeping this fish, though, guys. Don't worry. That looks like that fish is getting beat up in the rocks pretty good, but we're taking that fish home. Right, J. Bal, you're eating that. Oh, I'm eating that. Second fish of the day. Sea lion didn't get this one. Sea lion's kind of rough out there, so I had a yard have been pretty quick. But, uh, you know, not the biggest fish in the ocean, but she's gonna party. Phew. Well, you guys, just in case you were curious, because J. Bal didn't show you, this is the setup that he was rocking to catch that fish just now. This is a pretty classic setup. This is exactly what I usually fish, um, other than throwing that casting steel this morning as kind of an experiment, which uh, paid off. But here's a pretty old beater. Uh, it was pink and white, but now it's kind of pink and you know yellow brown or whatever. Large hammered out blade. I think that that's a three quarter ounce. And this is 30 pound fluorocarbon, uh, about two and a half feet of uh, 30 pound fluorocarbon, run into a barrel swivel, down to 50 pound braid um, on the cast. But these big spinners right here, they sell them at most of the markets, right close to where you're gonna be doing this kind of salmon casting. They got these, you know, basically exactly like this casting spinner and uh, all the little tackle shops right out here on the coast where guys are casting for salmon like this. And uh, that bright pink, kind of um, fluorescent pink and white is a real coho killer. Same type of lure in green is what we usually throw for Chinook. We're really trying to tar target Chinook. So I might put a green on here in a minute to see if I can't get into a nook. 
Um, I also might go back to a casting steel because I think that's a lot of fun. But uh, that's what Jay Val stuck his on this morning. So, and that's an old lure. You can see this lure is old and beater. You know, a uh, fresh paint job always looks nice when it hits the water, but last season's lure will definitely still catch you a fish. Yep. All right, you guys, I threw the crab snare out over here, but the ocean is just raging now, and I don't think that it could be sitting on bottom. The rod's kind of rocking around. I'm afraid everything's just gonna get tangled up in the rocks. So we're gonna pull it, and we're gonna check it at the same time, and then we'll probably relocate it somewhere where it can actually settle. I knew that if I took waves to the face long enough today in this crazy ass surf, that uh, bring home the bacon. Got a nice, nice wild coho. Super bright. Nice fish today. I'll hold out for a second, but. Dude, you almost got in the seal. Did you see the seal right there? Yeah. You know, the seal was there and the and the surf. That giant wave came in. I thought it would just knocked it off. So he's still alive right now, so I'm not going to hold him up too high above the net. But, uh, Nice what a beautiful fish. Right so with that fish right there, that means that all three of us have a fish on the bank and it's only like 9.30. So we can either do something else. We can hope for a Chinook, maybe hope for another clipped uh, coho. But I don't know, that just means we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Anyway, booyah. Well, you guys, you heard the man. We are limited out on our cohos for the day. We could still catch a Chinook each or a fin clipped coho but you're only allowed one wild coho a day. And we each have our wild coho. We've only been fishing maybe two and a half, three hours. Uh, a beautiful morning out here. Just come out, throw lures for a little bit. Pretty rowdy to just come out and smash salmon. And uh, all three of us have a salmon to put in the fridge. And uh, now we're gonna go catch some crabs and some rockfish and go pick some mushrooms and get into more of all the adventures that the abundance of Oregon has to offer. So pretty hyped on a quick morning and smashing some salmon and uh you know let's get back out there you're watching the bite Exactly where we are right now. We catch so many fish. Let's do the pop. Here, the river is out in the distance. Fresh paint job always looks nice when it hits the water. Look at this little coho. There it is. It's mainly a fly guy. Yeah. 
We're gonna party. Right, Jay Val, you're eating that? <laughs> what, second cast? I mean, you could do it, it's doable. Yeah. Pretty, pretty stoked on that. Uh, was pink and white, but now it's kind of pink and you know, yellow, brown, or whatever. That's the saying right there, slow and low as it can go. For nice, beautiful, fresh fish. So it can it can fall into the pocket. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> work it, work it, work it. That's a pretty badass in the pool. The biggest top top water bite I've ever, ever had. What a beautiful fish. Three fish we really needed. Oh, that's a big fish. Fish are in the box. Don't go nowhere. If you uh, ever want to test out a little bit of surf fishing for salmon, uh, really like the end of August all the way through the end of November is kind of your target time. Obviously in the beginning and the end of that, it's gonna be a little bit less hot, but uh, September, November, usually pretty, pretty hot out here. And all the way up and down the coast, there's fisheries. Can't tell you exactly where we are right now, but all the way from Southern Oregon, all the way up to Astoria, you're gonna find spots where there's guys casting into the surf for salmon. Uh, the uh, river mouse is usually where it's gonna be at. River mouse, the bays, the jetties, somewhere right up in there. If you go to the tackle shop that's uh, near the local jetty or river mouth in the area you want to fish, those guys will tell you exactly where to go and exactly what to use. i tell you where I am right now, except for all the locals out here would hang me next time if I did, so I can't tell you where I'm fishing today. But uh, get yourself a decent sized casting rod, 50 pound braid, you can run a leader if you want, we're running 30 pound fluorocarbon, and we're throwing giant hoochie spinners, or in this case a casting steel, and uh, it pays off real good. We got ourselves into some beautiful fish today, so. You! People really hate the guy that catches the first fish and then blows the spot up. Yeah, yeah, they really hate it if you catch the first fish of the day, blow the spot up, and then go, I got a new cool secret lure you should try out. That'll get you a lot of, uh, a lot of wins in the local community.